The Sea to Sky Highway weaves its way through the coast mountains, passing through Squamish, BC. Overlooking the town is British Columbia's best known volcano, Mount Garibaldi. But like most things in this region, Mount Garibaldi has another name. For the Squamish nation know it as Inchkai, the mountain that could predict the weather. Today, Garibaldi is home to a provincial park and a glacier lake. Its alpine backcountry forest attracts hikers and campers from around the world. Adventurers like AMI's Laura Bain and Grant Hardy. Join them as they venture along unmarked trails. Grant makes no bones about it. While he loves the outdoors, he's a city boy. Born, raised, and living in Metro Vancouver, Grant enjoys his modern comforts and relies on accessible technology to live life. His trusty iPhone always close at hand. Over 4,000 kilometers away, on the other side of the country in Halifax, Laura is looking forward to joining Grant on their wilderness adventure. As an avid hiker and camper, Laura is no stranger to the great outdoors. Still, this will be her first time on the Pacific coast in the heart of bear country. Our two hosts finally chat in person, Laura excited, while Grant, well, let's have him explain. I think I'm coming to accept that we're going on this adventure. Life is nothing if not stepping out of your comfort zone. Uh, to be honest, I'm definitely a city kid. I do love nature and I'm actually pretty passionate about the environment. But at the same time, I've come to rely on, you know, a lot of the accessible infrastructure around the city and a lot of the just independence of having my own place, my own washroom. Um, tons of options for food, that kind of thing. And I kind of don't see the need to sort of leave those comforts behind, I guess. You know what, I'm glad that you're pushing yourself a little bit for this. I mean, I know I love when I get in the woods, actually that feeling of being a little bit disconnected. And I'm hoping that you might actually find that, that when you're in the woods, you know, the sounds, the smells, that you're actually able to take a little break from your technology and maybe enjoy some of it. Is there anything that you're looking forward to with it? Um, I don't know that there's anything I'm really looking forward to. Um, how about you? I feel like it'd be hard for me to like express to you kind of how excited I am. Like even just being here in Vancouver, you know, today, um, the landscape is very different from Nova Scotia. I've never been on the West Coast before. Um, so I'm excited to get outside of the city and see what a rainforest is like. I'm also really excited to see the mountain. You know, we don't really have mountains out east. So, um, you know, Mount Garibaldi is, is a glacier lake. And uh, from what I understand, it's like a bright turquoise blue. So I really want to experience that. And also, like I've seen pictures of giant trees that you guys have out here. And so I'm hoping to maybe get to wrap my arms around one of those. I'm like a little bit of a tree hugger, but um, did you have any camping experiences when you were growing up? Yeah, I for sure went family camping uh, quite a bit. We definitely had lots of laughs and lots of stories around the campfire, but you know, ask me to hammer a tent peg into the ground and I'm liable to bend it and cause an argument. Uh, I was telling my friend Andy, uh, you know, food was always kind of a difficult thing to agree on. Um, at the at the end of the day, I think we were all just so glad to get home and get into our get into a hot shower, get into our warm beds. Um, so I think those are definitely some of the things that are going through my mind. Totally. And you know what, as much as I love the outdoors and love camping, I actually don't come from a family of campers. We had one camping experience when I was five. It was terrible. We ended up at the hospital. I won't get into it, but like, yeah, <laughs> it was actually like, it was our last family camping experience. So yeah, I'm really excited about the trip and I'm just like happy to be here and spend some time with you because we haven't had a chance to uh, really get together and, and work together. So I'm glad we have this chance anyway. Definitely. Sounding excited and confident, well, at least Laura is. While Grant is sounding more accepting of his fate. Perhaps a visit to Canada's best known outdoor adventure store could help? 
Um, welcome to MEC, guys. Let's get you geared up for your backpacking trip. Okay, sounds great. We'll follow you. Yeah. Oh, grab just my elbow. Grab an elbow and yeah. let's go. When we return to Unmarked Trails. Welcome back to Unmarked Trails. Before tackling the backcountry forest at Mount Garibaldi, our intrepid hosts, Grant Hardy and Laura Bain, go where many have gone before them, to Mountain Equipment Co-op, better known as MEC. Together, they'll learn the ins and outs of backcountry camping from Member Services Advisor, Matthew Bicknell. They met at the North Vancouver store. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Laura. Nice Good to, to meet see you. you. Yeah. Um, welcome to MEC, guys. Let's get you geared up for your backpacking trip. Okay, sounds great. We'll follow you. Cool. Yeah. Grab just my elbow. Grab an elbow and yeah. let's go. Here we are in our sleeping pad, tent, and sleeping bag department. But before we get into that, we should talk about our essentials. The first one is going to be navigation. Number two will be sun protection. Third will be insulation, so packing layers will be super important to, to make sure that you're, you're cool when you're hiking throughout the day, but also while it cools down into the evening or if you stop for a snack that you can layer and, and add and be warm. So the next one we'll talk about is illumination. So bring your headlamp with you, either in case you get stuck out on the trail at night, you're able to navigate the trail, or just moving around camp. Yeah, less essential for Grant, obviously, but really important for me because I have low vision when it gets dark. So tell me a little bit about how lights can be used as a signaling device in an emergency. Even though you're not gonna be using that light, Grant, I think having that device, just in case if you were to get into an emergency situation and someone was to be uh, trying to attempt to rescue you, you have the ability to signal them, and that's the light, a lot of them will strobe, send an SOS signal, so something you would still consider taking with you, Grant. The next one of that would be first aid. So you, this is convenient, they already come in packs. It, it's based on group size and also what type of trip you're going on. How do we make sure that our water that we're drinking from is safe? It's super important to, to treat your water. So there's quite a few ways. There's hollow fiber filters, there's uh, chemical treatments. Just drop a, a chemical tablet in there and within 30 minutes you have clean drinking water. Yeah, so what kind of things should we keep in mind in terms of food for a trip like we're doing? Uh, aside from, from what you're going to be eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you need to think about what you're, uh, uh, whether you're sweating a lot, and you need to bring some electrolytes, and you're going to be consuming a, a lot of food because you're also burning a lot of calories compared to just living in the city. You're, you're hiking for a long period of time, so you need to also factor in how many calories you're burning. So making sure that you're, uh, you pack the proper nutrition will allow you to have enough energy to hike throughout the day. I suppose if the chocolate bar was feeling too heavy, I could just gobble it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Grant's happy to hear that chocolate bars are an okay snack mm -hmm. to bring on a hike. With the essentials covered, it was time to learn about sleep and shelter options. So guys, here we are in the sleeping pad department. This is what we're going to use for sleeping on at night and make sure we have a good night's rest. It potentially protects us from any roots or rocks that we might be sleeping on. There's about three options. The first one is going to be a closed cell phone. Grant, if you want to have a feel of that, the plus side to this is that it's, it's really affordable, it's very durable, so you can take this out at lunch and, and sit on the ground and not worry about puncturing it. Reminds me a lot of like, a, it just seems like a rolled up yoga mat, maybe just like a little bit thicker. Yeah, a mat. little bit thicker, somewhat simplistic. Mm. So the second option is going to be an open cell, self-inflating sleeping pad. The plus side to this is that you're going to get a little bit more comfort. Grant, you can have a feel Ooh, of that. that feels you're beautiful. lifted a little bit more off the ground. You have to inflate it with your breath or with a pump. So the third sleeping pad option we have is strictly air. You can have a feel here. Laura, there you go. It's, oh yeah, that's like feels like it'd be really comfortable. Yeah, it's the, it's quite a bit thicker, so you can feel there, Grant, that um, you're, you're quite yeah. a bit more off the ground. Um, the big plus side is that extra extra softness there. Um, the downsides is that it uh, potentially it could puncture. It is just air. All right, guys. Now that we've had a look at what we're sleeping on, let's head over to the sleeping bags and see what we're going to be sleeping inside. So Matthew, I'm noticing that a lot of these sleeping bags have the mummy shape where they're like in at the feet versus the traditional rectangular shape. Like what's the advantage of the mummy shape? Yeah, Laura, the benefit of that is, is saving in, in weight and then also saving in space. So this one here 
is a, is a minus nine uh, down bag. And uh, for someone like you that mentioned that you run a little bit cold at night, I would highly recommend this one. Mm, it feels uh, really cozy. It's super warm. Down has a great benefit of its weight to warmth ratio is, is quite high. That This down bag is uh, packs down relatively small. Now it's a minus nine bag, so you're kind of getting at the warmer end of bags. So for someone like Grant, you could go with the zero degree bag if you run a little bit hot. I'm definitely a little hot blooded. So Grant, Laura, now that we've had a look at sleeping pads, sleeping bags, let's go over to tents and have a look at those. Ooh, Great. exciting. Hey Grant, I see you found one of our backpacking tents. How is it in there? She's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah, that is one of the aspects of a backpacking tent is that the goal is to find that balance between saving weight and then having enough space to, uh, to sp spread your stuff out. So they tend to go to the smaller sides. What would be the advantages of purchasing a high-end, you know, tent rather than kind of the cheapest option you yeah. can go with? There's definitely quite a few things that stand out. The fit and finish, the lifespan of the tent, uh, its ability to protect you from the elements. Most manufacturers will display on the tent or on their website, like uh, how many people are can fit into the tent. And um, if you look closely, it, it definitely is a, a snug fit. Just feeling inside, we've got two air mattresses, two sleeping bags, and about a hand's width, just over a hand's width yeah. of room in between. Yeah, I think in that case, Grant, you could always yeah size up one or two extra people and it's called you can you can then spread all your gear out so you'll have uh, plenty of space and you'll be much more comfortable. Mech is definitely Laura's playground, so she's off somewhere in the store enjoying it. I need to get fitted for a backpack for my trip in the meantime. Yeah, perfect, Grant. Let's get you into a bag. I think for the trip you're going on and the amount of gear you have, you're probably going to be anywhere from a 50 liter to a 65 liter. This one I have here, we'll, we can have you try it on and uh, we'll see if that goes. So I'll just have you put that on your shoulder sure. there. Thankfully, most of these bigger bags have the ability to adjust the, the shoulder straps going up and down because everyone has a different length torso. So we've dialed it in here and it looks really good. Great. Next thing we want to do is down by your hips, Grant, you're going to grab the hip belts and you're going to buckle those in. The most important thing is, is distributing the weight because you're carrying a large bag, it's a significant amount of weight and the goal is to kind of it's all different for everyone, but I kind of say around about 70% of the weight we want to be transferred into your hips. It's gonna be a lot less weight on your shoulders and it'll be more comfortable. Nice, yeah, feels so now, a lot lighter. Yeah, definitely. Um, now the hip belt's done, it's lined up, we have our shoulders. So that's the sternum strap you have in your hand there. And that's just gonna stop the shoulder straps from sliding around from left to right. So nice. it doesn't have to be cranked down, just nice and, just nice and loose like that. That looks good. Great. Matthew Grant's off looking at power banks for his iPhone, uh, and you and I are in front of hiking boots, which is one of the few types of footwear that I actually get excited about. So what are a few things that someone should keep in mind when picking out a hiking boot? Yeah, Laura, so for your trip going up over on an overnight hike, you're gonna want a pretty supportive shoe. You're, you're carrying a large bag. You might be doing some technical terrain. So there's a couple of things you wanna look at. You wanna look at, first off, is the sole. Uh, this, the sole of a hiking shoe is gonna have pretty thick lugs and that gives you plenty of traction if you're hiking in any mud or sand. It just gives you that grip and that confidence you'll need when you're hiking on a, on a trail. This one has a, a leather upper and you can expect that to be more durable than say a synthetic upper. Most hiking shoes are gonna have your a Gore-Tex or some, some sort of waterproof liner and that's a waterproof breathable liner. So regardless of whether the upper material is has mesh or has leather, if it has that waterproof liner, they're pretty good at advertising whether it does. Uh, you can expect your feet to stay dry all day. Yeah, let's go find Grant. Hey Grant, I thought we might find you here in the tent we set up. You look pretty cozy. Hi. So guys, now that we've covered all our essentials that we need for the trip, I just have a few more tips that I wanna point out to you guys. Uh, one thing I like to do is always bring something I can store all my electronics in. So something like a waterproof roll top bag. So the second thing I wanna talk about guys is hygiene. It's super important when you go out on the trail that you still bring the essentials. So something like hand sanitizer, if you don't have any access to water, you can use that. That kills 99% of the bacteria. I am definitely a germaphobe, so that's gonna be useful for me. Perfect, you can use that. And then something like a biodegradable soap that you can take with you. So you can do your dishes, you can wash your hair, you can also wash your hands, and that's gonna be safe for the environment. So the final thing I wanna to give to you guys is this can of bear spray. I think it'll help calm some nerves, 
just in case going out to the backcountry can be, for the first time, a little bit nervous, but knowing that there's wildlife, so this will just protect you just in case you had an encounter. I hope we don't have to use it here. You can check it out, Grant. I'm a bit worried I'm super tasty and the mirrors are going to want to eat me up, so I think I'm going to just keep this nice and safe in my tent. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for all of the useful information that you give me. I know Grant gets excited about tech gadgets. I get excited about camping stuff. Um, and uh, I think we're both a little more prepared for our trip, though. Yeah, that's great, guys. I really, I'm looking forward to hearing how your trip goes. I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. It's wonderful how speaking with someone who really knows their stuff can help with confidence. Well, maybe a visit with a friend couldn't hurt. But come on, like, what's not to like about camping? The fresh air, the fresh water, go swimming, hiking. It's awesome. Grant drops in on his pal from Get Connected when Unmarked Trails returns. We now return to Unmarked Trails. Although more informed after visiting MEC, our host Grant Hardy was still feeling a bit nervous. His anxiety about the upcoming backcountry camping trip with co-host Laura Bain kept bubbling up in his thoughts. But there was someone he could turn to for help. His friend and Get Connected host, Andy Barrar, loves camping. Before long, Grant found himself knocking on Andy's front garden gate. Grant! Hey, Andy. Oh, buddy, long time no see. How you been? Good, how about yourself? Come on it's in, man. It's been way too long. I know, I know. You know what? You came on the perfect day. I just built this new smart deck that's completely voice activated. You gotta check it out. Awesome. All right, come on let's, with me. Let's do. There, I got you some water, oh, man. Thanks. Hey, cheers. Cheers, man. Mm. So what's going on? So here's the thing. I got this work camping trip that I gotta do, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little anxious about it. Actually, I was almost thinking of talking to like a counselor or something, and then I figured, no, I know who a better person to talk to. I want to. I want to talk to Handy Andy, a fellow techie. Oh, dude! All my life, when I was a kid, I went camping every single summer. It's the best. You know, Are you serious? Fresh air, clean water, just silence. You can hear the birds, see the stars. What's not to like about camping? When's the last time you went camping? Oh, I mean, tenging years ago when I was a little kid with my family, and uh, the last time we went family camping, we ended up going out for all our meals. That's how, like, not a camper I well, am. You know, there are pros and cons of camping. One, you have to use the outhouse, and you can only eat the food that you bring with you. But you know what? When you look at it, it is just one of the best experiences you have. It's a must-have every summer. Okay, okay, so I should maybe stop complaining. So is I gotta ask point? you, okay, okay, you know I'm gonna ask. What kind of gadgets are you bringing with you? Well, I mean, definitely my smartphone. I would just feel totally unplugged without that. I mean, even if there's not cell reception, I can at least stick some GPS markers yep. at different points in the site. And uh, I'll, I'll also bring my fitness tracker, my Apple Watch, because at the end of the day, it's bragging rights. I want to prove that I did this four-hour hike. That's some great data. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, exactly. Um, but I guess that's where you come in. What else do I need? Oh, you know what? You couldn't have asked a better guy, because right there in my shed is some of the best tech gadgets that anybody could get, and I just hadn't had a chance to go camping to use them. Okay, now the first one I gotta show you, this is my favorite. It's huge though. This is from Monster. It's the Superstar Rave Box, the ultimate Bluetooth speaker for campsites. Um, Andy, you're aware I have a 10K hike, right? I have to carry everything on my back. Oh, then you definitely don't want this, man. It's almost like 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. However, I just happen to have this. This is from Eton, feel this. This is their AM FM emergency radio. So when you're camping, you're gonna be able to take care of yourself and know that something goes wrong, you're gonna be able to find help. Ooh, look how light that is. I like that. And you feel like it has that handle right on the top? Yeah. But check this out. If I move it onto the bottom, there is a solar panel. So it'll actually charge while you're on the campsite. Oh, that's awesome. No, 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 it gets better. I'm gonna flip it over on the other side. Here, feel that. It's a hand crank. We got two ways of charging this beast. Not only can you charge this radio, but you could also, here, feel this on the side. There is a USB port 
so you can charge your phone. In the event that you're camping, yes. your phone's dead, and you have no other way to get power, you just keep cranking away. It's going to take some time, but you know, you will survive and be able to call for help. It actually has a light on the top and on the side as well, but you're gonna need a dedicated light, and that's why I have this guy right here. This is the Eco Survivor LED Lantern. Okay. Feels and looks like a lantern. Mm -hmm. However, inside is an LED light that's charged by four batteries on the bottom, so you're gonna get about 180 hours, which should be enough light for your entire trip and then some. I would think so. Looks nice and safe, and especially for my colleague Laura, who's going along, who has low vision at night, this is gonna be super useful for her. Now, last thing that you're gonna need, and this is just for the ambience, feel this. Ooh, like a squishy balloon, kind of. That's right, it's from a company called Empower, and this is the Luchi Aura, and it's an inflatable lantern that also has LED lights inside. But, if I flip it over, you see that? That, my friend, is another solar panel that's going to charge it. So you oh, don't, okay. that's the only way you can charge this, is with the sun. So it's perfect for camping. Plus, right in the middle, feel that? That button right there is going to change it a variety of different colors. So orange, red, green, blue, purple, you name it. Your friend Laura is going to have a blast of a time setting this all up and making your campsite like a nightclub. Neat. There's a fire ban, but we can still keep the party going. <sighs> Now I'm jealous. I want to go camping with you guys. When are you going? Uh, tomorrow morning. What you got going on this week? I was supposed to do some stuff with Mike Agarbol, but you know what? Let me call him. Hold on. I'm going to call Mike. Mike, it's Andy. Yeah, yeah. Guess who I'm with? Grant. Grant Hardy. Yeah, that Grant Hardy. Hey, listen. He's going camping for the first time, and uh, I kind of want to go with him. I was just giving him some of the tech toys that we've been using on campsites. You gotta clear my schedule. No, no, no. Just clear it. <laughs> what? So, Mike? You're breaking up. Hey, hey, I'll, I'll talk to you in a couple days. All right, bye. Smooth, Andy, smooth. <laughs> okay, cheers, buddy. All right, cheers. We're going camping. <laughs> Woo! And just like that, our hikers were now a team of three. It's the evening before departure and time for our hosts to finish packing. Laura, with everything organized on the hotel bed, started filling her 65 liter backpack. All right, I think my sleeping bag is supposed to go in first. Tent. Got my sleeping mat. Uh-oh, this is getting pretty full. Text Grant. What do you want to say? Hey Grant, how's the packing going? I'm like, oh man, I better get a move on here. So, let's take this bag. It actually feels kind of heavy even empty. Uh, where am I supposed to put my food? Okay, um, I think I need to rethink this. Text Grant. What do you want to say? I'm having a hard time fitting my stuff in. How's yours going? Question mark. I always admire people who have that knack for packing. Unfortunately, I am not one of them. Let's use some muscle power to really get that stuff in there. Text Grant. What do you want to say? Can I put some of my stuff in your bag? Question mark. You can tell I'm really a city kid if you look at this bag. I'll try and get the liner in there. Close her up if I can figure out how to do that. Text Grant. What do you want to say? I'm finished packing. Did I beat you? Question mark. Coming up after the break, Bags are packed, and anticipation is in the air as our hosts hit the road to adventure. Grant, are you excited for this trip? Do you want my honest Honest, answer? honest. All I'm asking was your honest. What's going on in your mind right now? When we return to Unmarked Trails. You're watching Unmarked Trails. It's morning in Vancouver, and as the sun rises, so do our fearless hosts, Grant Hardy and Laura Bain. They're joined by Get Connected's Andy Barrar and the team behind the camera, producer Hamid Tandon and videographers Sergio and Ricardo. All are ready to load the car and hit the road for the overnight backcountry camping trip. 
Hey. 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 I'm Laura. I'm Laura, I'm Andy. Awesome. So What's we're going to put our stuff in here. Sounds oh. good. Okay. Okay, here's the uh, trunk here. Once you swing that off, get rid of this heavy beast here. We're going to go from here. We're going to Squamish, right? Yeah, stop it. We'll stop in Squamish. Yeah. We'll uh, fuel up, um, you know, food, coffee, get ourselves ready. Yeah. Uh, and then the trailhead should be a short drive from there. Now it was time. Time to drive up the Sea to Sky Highway. Time to put what they learned into action. Because Mount Garibaldi was beckoning and adventure was calling. Grant, are you excited for this trip? Do you want my honest answer? Honest, honest. All I'm asking was your honest. What's going on in your mind right now? I don't know if I'm super excited, but I mean, it is gonna, I'm, I'm sure it'll be good. Like it'll take me out of my comfort zone and stuff. Yeah. That's the whole point, my friend. Yes. How about you, Andy? You oh, can... I'm super excited. Yeah. I used to go camping as a kid all the time. And you know, now when I work and like, you know, I love technology too, but I'm really looking forward to the detox. Yeah. The digital detox, uh, just to remind ourselves about how beautiful a, a place of an earth we live in of course and to experience that without the technology just listening to the birds and the silence uh, uh, I, the water it's gonna be a really really fun experience I think you're a, a good influence on me I, I, I think so too I hope so and you know another thing is the sensory like you're just gonna hear things that you just don't normally hear in the city yeah like the roar of, of bears and stuff <laughs> Does anyone have any good camp songs? Do you know any good camp songs, Grant? On top of spaghetti. Do you guys know that song? Yeah. Because here's mine. On top of spaghetti. Gonna leave it right there. Running away from the campsite. <laughs> because I can hear a bear. Do you That's like pretty it? That's good. Thank you. Holy moly. So like the... Mountains are higher than the clouds, so you can see the clouds, like, below the mountain peaks. I've never seen that before. Our intrepid hosts arrive at the trailhead and start to gear up for the 10-kilometer hike. With an elevation gain of over 800 meters, plus the 30 to 40 pounds in their backpacks, this was no walk in the park. So, you ready, man? I am so ready. You are born for this. Exactly. I was going to say, Laura? I'm born ready. Oh, so ready. This, my friends, is going to be a great, great hike. So we're looking at the Garibaldi Lake map here, provided by BC Parks, and it really tells us where we are at the parking lot, and then our destination over at Garibaldi Lake. We're going to see a couple of things. We're going to see the barrier, which is actually a lava barrier that prevents all of Garibaldi Lake from flooding Squamish. So this is really made out of lava, and it'll be a cool thing to look at. And that's why they call it the barrier, because it really is. I thought you were barrier. going to say the bear. No, 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 no. The barrier. <laughs> because one of the bridges are closed, we're going to have to do a detour, and we're going to be going down Taylor Meadows Trail. So it's a little bit longer, but we get to see a lot of cool other things as we make our way down to Garibaldi Lake. So Grant, I know you got your Apple Watch with you, so it'll be really interesting to see what kind of stats we're gonna get during this hike. Yeah, looking forward to the bragging rights of having that digital map that shows where I walk. Absolutely, and you get some great data about uh, all the steps you take and the calories burned, so it's good that we had uh, a pretty big lunch. Ooh. Laura, are you ready? Wondering how my heart rate's gonna shoot up. And shoot up it does. Way up. After the break, it's time to clip on those bear bells, break out the trekking poles, and hit the trail. Unmarked Trails, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Unmarked Trails. With bear bells jingling and the weight of full packs on their backs, 
our fearless hosts, Grant Hardy and Laura Bing, start the 10-kilometer backcountry hike to Garibaldi Lake. Get Connected's Andy Barrar and producer Amit Tandon join the duo as they start the upward climb into Mount Garibaldi Provincial Park. Beautiful day for a hike, I'll tell you that. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Andy guides Grant, who has traded in his white cane for a hiking pole. I Good probably job. haven't done a hike like this since the crows crying. Uh, well, you know what they say, if you can do the grind, you can do the Garibaldi. Oh, that was a year ago, and I may have put on one or two or ten pounds. <laughs> By the way, no one's ever said that until now. <laughs> yeah. I had a big lunch. Yep. Um, drank lots of water. And had coffee, so that's pretty if important. that's not a full tank of gas, I don't know what is. <laughs> I had a pretty reasonable lunch and a full French press full of coffee and a little bit of H2O on top of that. And a Coke or a Pepsi? Possibly a Coke or Pepsi, but you know, I thought that was our little secret. <laughs> All right, how, let's play a little game, okay? Okay. It's called the out of gas game. Okay. Out of scale of one to 10, 10 being that you're completely out of gas, where are you gonna rank yourself right now? Four? Four, okay. How about you? Uh, one. Oh, okay. So then we'll see, we'll keep going and see how that goes. Okay. How about you, Laura? Where would you rank yourself? Uh, four, but I feel like I have a fairly high bar. Grant said a four, Andy said one. Oh, Andy's full of, I don't believe him. Full of gas. <laughs> Laura's tunnel vision allows her to follow Amit's boots, while her trekking poles trace the sides of the trail, which is especially important when one side is a sheer drop. It's almost like when you're walking with your white cane, how your cane sweeps where you step before you step there. Right. Like the pole on the left and the pole on the right are each kind of feeling before I set my foot down. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that there's ground there. Ooh. See, that's, <laughs> that's the benefit of the pole. You don't go tumbling off the edge. All the exertion makes hydration extremely important, and drinkable water becomes a precious resource. Okay, Grant, so we're at a, a little waterfall here, okay. and this is the last water stop for a long time, and you pretty much drank all your water, all 48 <laughs> ounces of it. So I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna grab you some water. We got these little pills we can do to purify it, make sure that it is uh, safe to drink, okay? Thanks, man. So you just wait here. I'll go down over there and get you some water, my friend. Sounds like a plan. Oh, well, I got this fresh spring water. Now, I just want you to hold it. It is safe to drink most of the time, but we're gonna, just to be extra safe, I have these things called aqua tabs, right. and I'm gonna put it in there just to make sure that you're gonna be okay drinking this, some of the best water the world can provide. I have to say, guys, I think we're doing a pretty good job so far. Yeah, I uh, feel it, though. We, we got along with it. Watch your step, Grant, there. Yep, yeah, there's a rock. There's, uh, you know, a lot of incline right in the beginning, but it's going to get better and better as, uh, and easier as we keep going. Where are you feeling it? Uh, you, nowhere. You know what? The, the weight of my backpack, I just climatized to it, so it doesn't really... I forget about all the weight that we are carrying, literally, on our shoulders. Well, you can take some of my stuff, Andy, if you want it. I can definitely give you it. So at the 2K mark, we'll see where we're at. Who would have ever thought, eh? Yeah. Two of Canada's tech personalities out in the trails, <laughs> completely disconnected. Oh, are we taking the detour now? No, this is a 2.5. Oh, OK. Holy shit. Let's take a break. So guys, so far out of the 10K hike, we've done two and a half kilometers. How are you feeling, Laura? Do you know what? I'm actually feeling like t more tired than I'm, I expected. I'm really? pretty sweaty. Um, so out of our little scale of one to 10, 10 being completely out of gas, where would you put yourself now? I mean, I'd say before we stopped to have this little snack, I was maybe like out of five, um, but I'm probably back down to a three now that we're sitting down and getting a little cooled off. I, um, I do some hiking back home, but I haven't done a lot of hiking with a pack and it makes a huge yeah. difference having that weight on your That back. weight does, yes. Yeah. How, how about you, Grant? How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. I'm kind of a bit of a trooper, I guess. Like, I just kind of, I, I sort of end up drifting into my own little thought 
that's pushing forward. So I noticed during the trail, you were still getting reception on your phone, you were checking your phone, mm -hmm. but now you're completely disconnected. How does that feel? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the part of us, especially being techies coming out into this wilderness, is to have that digital detox and to kind of just take a break from technology and enjoy Mother Nature. Yeah, I wonder what some good techniques are for digital detox. Let me Google it. Oh, wait, <laughs> I can't Google it. So this is a lot different than Halifax coming here into British Columbia. Like you're really getting treated with that West Coast hiking experience. Mm. How does it feel so far? Do you know what I'd say like the actual terrain isn't that different in terms of the trails like here and if you're in the woods in Nova Scotia, but I think the big difference is the elevation. I'm not used to hiking up an elevation like this. Well, we're at this junction where it's going to start to elevate even more. So it's a good thing that we're taking this break right oh, now. Man, I thought I thought we were going to level off. OK, we've got a little more climbing to do. <laughs> Coming up, the upward climb continues as our team realizes they're fighting against time. When Unmarked Trails continues. You're watching Unmarked Trails. With the first 2.5 kilometers behind them, our hosts, Grant Hardy and Laura Bain, along with their sighted guides, Andy Barrar and Amit Tandon, have started their journey up the trail. They're on their way to camp overnight in the backcountry forest of Mount Garibaldi. The uphill climb is especially challenging with the weight of full packs on their backs. You know, in the next two days, you're probably gonna do more walking than you do probably in two weeks. Really? You'll have a good sleep tonight, I guarantee that. After expending this much energy, on a hike with that, this kind of incline, it's going to be amazing. Well, I'm guessing we're around about the three and a half kilometer mark out of 10. We've gotten a lot of incline. How are you feeling, Laura? You know what? I'm actually feeling a lot more tired than I expected. I think it's the elevation combined yeah. with the carry in the pack. Well, Grant, how are you feeling? <laughs> You're eating some Twizzlers there, so. Mm. Not sure that's the best hiking snack, but uh, to each their yeah, own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I definitely am feeling pretty ready to get there, although I do recover quickly after a break. Okay. Mm. Well, I think that's important is that we take a lot of breaks. Yeah, the breaks are really good. I mean, like as much as I feel tired and a little bit sore at this point, it's I'm really feeling good about the exercise and getting my heart rate up. Mm -hmm. One thing I have to say I noticed, and I've, I was really looking forward for like the digital detox. You know, I haven't really brought many devices. I just brought my iPhone. I did bring this emergency radio just in case. But I was really surprised, Grant. You're still very, very much connected to both your iPhone and your smartwatch. Now, why would you say that, Andy? <laughs> Every time we've been taking a break, he's always checking his watch. <laughs> and I keep reminding him that like, there is no cell reception here. But um, he's been really focused on the battery level for your Apple Watch. And you're, what, around 30%? So yeah. well, I, we're I'm... gonna see if we make it that far. So Grant, I noticed that you like your Twizzlers on this hike. I'm just gonna go ahead and look at what nutritional value you're have, eating. I have some health benefits. Uh, so for every three that you eat, you're getting 150 calories. And 18 grams of sugar. Now, you I just saw you eat about nine of them. So <laughs> you're probably around 60 grams of sugar. So if anything, you're literally running on sugar right now. I'm actually gonna gain weight from this hike. And unfortunately for every three, uh, Twizzlers, you only get one gram of protein. So there's a little bit. You, my friend, just yeah. got a huge influx of sugar, <laughs> and we need to take advantage of that and start burning it up this incline that we're about to go. So I hope you're ready and refueled. Sounds like flare. Yeah, I wonder if we'll actually see snow at the top. I bet we will. So after all that sugar, how do you, did it give you a recharge? A little bit. Yeah. It is quite the endurance mm -hmm. test. A lot of it is mental, you know? Yeah. Sometimes when I'm struggling, I just talk to myself and I'm like, come on, Andy, you got this, you got this. Kind of like a personal coach in my head. Yeah, for sure. So you can try that when, you're, when you feel you can't do it. Just keep on pushing. Smart. Around the five kilometer mark, our adventurers decided to shake things up and swap sighted guides 
Amit joins Grant, while Andy partners with Laura. Pretty much for the last, I'd say, two hours, we've been just going up. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it anywhere in your body? You know where I'm feeling it is in my heels. I got a little blister forming oh. on my left heel. Yeah. Um, and pretty much my whole lower half, feeling it in my whole lower yeah. half. What about, what about you? Um, I think I hit a rock somewhere. So I kind of hurt my tendon on the left, my left foot. As tight as we feel, it's almost like, like that runner's high. Yeah. You, I know we're gonna feel so good yeah, after. Of course. You know, I spent a lot of time with Grant and uh, I can tell he's a trooper, definitely a trooper, but he's, uh, he's feeling it right now as well. Well, this is pretty cool. We've hit it guys, we hit the junction. This is the 6K mark. The time where we have to detour because of that uh, bridge being closed down. As the team re-energizes, it dawns on them that they're fighting against time. There's still over three kilometers to cover with evening fast approaching. The team decides to separate. Laura and Andy take off ahead. Their goal is to get to the campsite and set up as soon as possible. No one wants to arrive after sundown. Rest and dinner will have to wait. Definitely underestimated how physically challenging this would be for me. I sort of thought, like, oh, because I walked like, like on Sunday, I walked 18K. It was, and it wasn't a big deal. With each heavy step, our explorers are increasingly thirsty. But the summer has made water scarce, and our exhausted hikers still have a couple of kilometers before the next water source. I wonder if they stopped, they might have stopped to take another break. Meanwhile, Grant and Amit hit variable terrain and slow down as a precaution. Going to do a big step up here. A bit further ahead, Laura and Andy notice that the trail has leveled off. I feel like we might be entering a slightly different terrain. The trees have really changed right here. Do you think that we should wait for them to catch up? Uh, he said, let's go down there. Because one, th one thing we want to do is find where we're going to camp. Yeah. It's slim pickings, but Laura and Andy reach the campground and after scouting out the area, secure a few sites. Grant and Ahmed cross the last narrow footbridge and rejoin the team at Lake Garibaldi. Wow, that was a challenging hike. Like, way more challenging than the grouse grind was, in my opinion, especially because, you, you know, you go up and up and up, and then you feel like it's gonna level out, which it kind of does, but then you get into some really technical, difficult trail. There was also not really a sense for me of when we were coming to the end, especially because of all the twists and turns. Tired and hungry, there was no time to rest. It was after 8 p.m. and sunset was around the corner. Tents had to be pitched and sites organized. So okay, let's just get the next last tent up. So is we have to have two and two, right? We have to have another tent here. Okay, yeah. so where's that tent? It would be in Grant's bag. Okay. So I don't think this entrance is going to be very friendly to anyone who has any vision loss. When we return, night settles and dinner is served. Unmarked trails will return after a short break. We return to Unmarked Trails. Night falls at Mount Garibaldi, and aside from the occasional light from a headlamp or lantern, the campground is plunged into darkness. The 10-kilometer hike has left our hosts, Grant Hardy and Laura Bain, hungry. They join fellow campers Get Connected's Andy Barrar and producer Amit Tandon at a picnic table to hydrate their meals. Videographer Sergio Vera Barahona plays chef, boiling water for each hiker's packet of dehydrated food. Armed with forks and empty stomachs, they're ready to tear into their dinner straight from the pouch. I'm having the Mexican style quinoa bowl. Mm. How about you? I have, um, I don't remember exactly what I have. 
cheese and mushroom risotto. That's oh. what you're having. I'm having the Santa Fe style rice and beans with chicken. I'm gonna imagine that I'm having a burger with tons of fries, <laughs> but in reality, I'm actually having uh, some spaghetti and meat sauce, which should be pretty good. Maybe I'll imagine I'm having a fine white wine to wash it down <laughs> Oh, you mean a red wine with uh, spaghetti. Oh. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we put, we put hot water in this and we waited for what? How long do you think? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. All right, we so, ready to. I think we're ready to dig in. Dig in. I, I think you're. I think you're good to go. Amazing. Not bad. I think that's what I like the most about this is that it's warm food. Yeah. So the, as the day got colder, to have something like this is really hearty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a dumb question, maybe, guys, but I'm a bit of a. A bit of a germaphobe. Is there anywhere I can wash my hands, like in the outhouse, or...? The outhouse is basically a hole in the ground with, like, a seat belt over it. It doesn't have, like, hand sanitizer in there, or...? There is a fresh glacier lake just just over, or just over yonder. Oh, okay. Take you there. Oh, well, that might have to do. As bellies get filled, the chatter moves from the food to the day's events. Once that, once the, the light and that sun's going down, we are just, like, in, like, like go mode yeah. of just like, okay, like we started prioritizing the tents, figuring out the systems, and then we were just like figuring out the layout, the campsites. It was, we did a really good job. It was a lot of teamwork well, to make that, that happen. Yeah, that's like the, the word is teamwork because yeah. like, obviously I think it would have been ideal if Grant and I could have like set up our own tents and stuff and we didn't in this case get to because we were losing the light and we need to get yeah, them set dark up, for me. but I think like that's where kind of relying on your your team sometimes is the right thing. Yeah, you must feel proud of yourself though, right? To go through it, like to be able to sit down and have have a nice dinner after a big trek like that. I feel more energized now. With dinner over, it's time to hunker down and get cozy in the tents. Okay, Grant, I was skeptical about all this technology in the backcountry, but I have to admit, you have the coolest tent, and I really appreciate you inviting Andy and me to hang out here. You got that right. We got lights, we got a power bank here for the phone. Welcome to my tent, you guys. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, do you guys know any, uh, like, camping stories or old stories for the Saved by the Campfire since we have this LED light? Hmm. Uh, well, I got, can I, can I tell a story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Squamish people have a story about this mountain, which they call niche guy and it takes place a long long time ago ever, ever since time, time could remember, remember the squamish people have lived on these lands but they had started forgetting the young ignored the lessons of the past and became selfish and disrespectful food disappeared and the fish went away there was much unhappiness then the rain started to fall without end until all the land was covered with water and the people floated up in their canoes higher and higher. In this region, Inchkai was the only mountain still above the water, so they anchored their canoes to its peak while the medicine man wrote on the side of the mountain, imploring the rain to stop. Eventually, the rains ended, and the water receded, leaving behind a lake. The very lake that our tired hikers sleep beside tonight. It's morning at Mount Garibaldi, and the campsite stirs awake. It doesn't take long for the coffee to get brewing. Mm, this is starting to smell good. It always gets me up in the morning is that smell of coffee. You know, guys, this camp stove that we brought with us is absolutely perfect for oh, backcountry yeah. camping. Yeah, it's just like a single stove burner that sits on a gas canister you could pretty much put in your pocket. Um, and it's done a great job of boiling the water for this oatmeal that Andy and I are eating. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. What are you having over there, Grant? I'm going for the spaghetti and meat sauce again. Solid energy option. I'm feeling great. I'm a little tired, but I'm not too sore from our hike yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I know we've got a long trip back. We've got to go back down mm. the 10K. Uh, but I want to check out the site a little more, maybe go down to the lake. What do you guys think? Uh, I think that's a great idea. How about you, Grant? I will definitely watch you guys from the shore. <laughs> Let's come over here. Oh, it looks so nice. 
Okay, so just underneath you now is the water. Do you feel that? This is big. Not that bad for hand washing, but I would not want to. So refreshing. It's really dip. refreshing. We are standing in a glacier lake. After stopping by the cold lake, the group packs up and takes the rocky trail out of the campground. Okay, folks, soon we'll be back into civilization. What are you talking about? This is fun. Although going downhill sounds easy, carrying weight adds extra strain on the knees. After a few kilometers, the team breaks for a snack. We just hit a 3K down. We're down at the junction. This is the 6K mark going up to Garibaldi Lake. What was the uh, trek like for you coming down? You know what? It actually, uh, it's a little bit cooler today. Yeah. And uh, I find the downhill is a lot easier, except for that that okay. first little bit right over the campsite was tricky. But uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling really good and just digging into my fuel because I know we've got to put that push on for the last That's 6K. Right. How are you feeling, Grant? I am definitely ready to be down at the bottom. The hikers tackle the switchbacks as they carefully zigzagged down the mountain. Eventually, Ahmed and Laura find themselves back at the parking lot, relieved that they can finally rest. A short while later, Andy and Grant appear, their journey at a merciful end. It was time to ditch the backpack, time to catch a few breaths, and time to appreciate the accomplishment. For Grant, it was a mixed experience. It is always good to get out of your comfort zone, but I don't know if I had to go that far out of my comfort zone, 10 kilometers, it would have also been really great to have some orientation around the campsite. Um, but one big plus was working with Laura and Andy and the whole rest of the team. Laura's excitement was pretty incredible. I was trying to soak it all in. The giant trees around our campsite, snow-capped Mount Garibaldi, and the greenness of everything was so astoundingly beautiful and so different from Nova Scotia. It was the good people around me, the natural beauty, and the persistence of my unsteady steps that made this an experience I will never forget. It's hard to forget Mount Garibaldi. It's said that after the Great Flood, the Squamish remembered to always be humble and kind. I'd say that's something worth remembering. Hosts Grant Hardy, Laura Bain, Andy Barrar. Producer, Ahmed Tandon. Videographer and editor, Sergio Vera Barahona. Additional videographers, Ricardo Brevis, Andrew Pickup. Narrator, Andy Frank. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Emily Harding. Audio Post, Jeremy Rose. Post-Production Supervisor, Janice Civitilli. Graphics, Mike Smith. Senior Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, AMI-TV, Brian Perdue. Vice President Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2018, Accessible Media, Inc.